Hello dear friends, and welcome back to Pillow Pasta. And you're probably thinking right now, or at least those of you not familiar with the story, Ooh, what's this? A creepypasta about Barbie? Okay, so it's gonna be some evil living doll story? Well, that's what I thought at first as well. But apparently it's some rather popular live action footage story. I'll give you a minute to let the disappointment sink in. Okay, now that's over with, let's dig into Barbie.avi. Hello. Hi! This thing happened to me a few months ago. I just need to share it with somebody. It all started at my friend's party. He's an artist who rented out a loft in the industrial part of town. If you can picture what a place like Detroit looked like in the 1920s, that's what this area looks like. A bunch of old turn-of-the-century factories crammed into ten blocks. Most of them abandoned. By Disney! Oh no, sorry, that's next time. So I partied a little too hard that night, and decided to crash on the couch at the loft. I woke up at around 4am. The sun wasn't out yet, but you could still make things out in the dim blue light. I went to the bathroom, carefully tiptoeing around the people who were passed out drunk on the floor. As I was taking a piss, I tiptoed to look out the bathroom window, and I saw the panorama of deserted urban decay. Never heard such pretentious wording from somebody simultaneously taking a piss and standing knee-high in vomit and drunken frat boys. Not that I don't approve. I remembered how much I liked places like this. It was so dark and devoid of life and strangely serene. The toilet? So I went back to the couch and tried to fall asleep. After 45 minutes of staring at the ceiling, I decided I didn't want to be there any longer. So I swallowed my pride and decided to wake my girlfriend up to beg her for a ride, since walking around the vacant street at this time was out of the question. Being an awesome girlfriend, she was totally cool with it, and told me she would be there in about half an hour, and that she would give me a call when she was outside. My phone died 10 minutes later. So I decided I would sit by the window and watch for her car. I sat there for a while, and my eyes started to get heavy, and I began to doze off. A crashing sound outside woke me up. It wasn't loud, but just enough to snap me into reality. I looked out the window, scanned the area, but didn't see anything. Across the street from the loft, near a mountain of garbage bags and one enormous dumpster, I see a computer and a monitor smashed on the floor that hadn't been there before. When my girlfriend arrived, I went downstairs and greeted her. Just as I was about to get into the car, I remembered a friend of mine who had just blown out his power supply. So I decided to walk over to the dumpster and see what I could salvage. Then I remembered I lived in Alabama, which means the dumpster's just probably full of Trump supporters. The monitor was worthless, but the tower seemed to have suffered almost no damage. So I put it in the trunk and we drove off. About a week had passed, and I'd completely forgotten about the tower until my girlfriend called to let me know that it was still in the trunk, and that she wanted it out. That night, I brought it home. Before I took it apart, I decided to hook it up to my monitor and see if it still ran, and to my surprise, it did. It ran Windows XP, and it looked like it had been wiped clean. I decided to do searches for words like tits and pussy, in hopes of finding some secret stash full of weird porn the previous owner had forgotten about. Now I believe this is the kind of guy who's at his philosophical best while taking a piss. Search came up nothing. Searched for picture files, nothing. Then I searched for movies, and one file came up. It was a .avi inside a folder titled Barbie. It was hidden in the Windows slash System32 directory. So I played it. Now, this is where it gets disturbing. Well, it's either a pirated version of Barbie of Swan Lake, or judging by his previous searches, it's more likely something like this. Oh, oh, yeah. me. Oh, oh, who's your daddy now? Come on. Oh, oh. The movie was about an hour long, and was made up of what seemed like raw exported footage. 
The footage was of this woman sitting on a chair and talking against a white backdrop. I skipped through most of the movie, and it was all the same continuous shot. Then I decided to just sit through the footage and find out what she was talking about. Fifteen seconds into the footage, the audio goes completely bad and her voice is drowned out in harsh static background noise. I couldn't make out a thing. So I imported the footage into Final Cut and tried to mess with the levels to isolate her voice. It helped a little, but I still couldn't hear what she was saying. I was intrigued now, and I began to really pay attention to her face and body language. It seems like she's been asked some kind of questions, because she stops at times to listen, and then continues talking. So it's an episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? About 15 minutes into the footage, her face begins to redden and contort as if the questions are bothering her. Oh, she must have reached the $10,000 tier. Eddie really gets on your grind there. Shortly after, she begins to cry. She sobs hysterically for the duration of the film. One of the few words I could lip read was... Skin. She repeats this word many times throughout the footage, and at one point she even pulls at the skin of her arm and mouths the word. She seems to be unhappy with her skin. There is much more I have to get off my chest. But it's getting late and I can't go on. I will share the rest tomorrow. God save my soul. Uh... Good night. Seriously, the story continues on like normal directly after that. What was the point of that? It kept on building and building, and about 40 minutes in, she's crying so hard she can barely look at the camera. She stops talking at this point, and the rest of the footage is just her crying with her head down. Oddly enough, she doesn't get up or move. This green just fades to black. I was fucking dumbfounded. I played the whole thing through many times that night trying to find inflections or nuances in her movement that might reveal anything about what was going on. I felt so dissatisfied. I wanted to know more. That's when I noticed there was about 10 more minutes left in the timeline, after the screen went to black. And about two minutes in, there was more footage. Ooh, post credit stuff. I hope we get to see Thanos in this cut. The footage was extremely shaky, almost unwatchable and depicted a pair of legs walking along train tracks. My guess is that the camera was accidentally left on and was being carried somewhere. The person in this footage walks along the train tracks for about six minutes, and then turns into the forest and walks over what looked like foliage flattened by a piece of plywood. The person continues on this makeshift plywood road until the movie clip ends. Now my heart started beating with excitement because there were train tracks a few miles away that looked very similar to the ones in the video. I had to check this out. I called up my friend Ezra. He's six foot four, 250 pounds of mostly muscle. I convinced him to go on a little adventure with me. I'm no pushover, but I felt if I was gonna go wandering in the woods looking for God knows what, extra muscle couldn't hurt. This whole idea of investigating this video had me so excited I couldn't even sleep. The next morning on a sunny Saturday, I took my flashlight, my camera, and my 7 inch kabar with a matte black finish and serrated edge, and went to go pick up Ezra. You call that a knife? Because I do and I don't want to fuck with you. When I got to his house, he wasn't even awake, so I decided to go through with it without him. I parked my car at the train station, took my stuff, and hopped onto the tracks. After walking for about two hours, I saw a broken piece of plywood, and my knees almost buckled with excitement. I searched the nearby foliage, and there it was, a little plywood trail leading into the forest. I walked slowly along the trail, paying close attention to everything. I would stop occasionally, kneel down and listen for anything or anyone, but it was so quiet. This was one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever done. I didn't know what to expect at the end of this trail. The dense tree line gave way onto a little island of grassy field, and then I saw it. 
a house being consumed by the forest. From the looks of it, no one had lived there for 20, maybe 30 years. I got my camera and snapped a few pics. A few yards away from the house was a tool shed made of rusty sheet metal. I just sat there among the trees for a while, absorbing everything. I didn't want to go into the open field. I had this bad feeling that something would see me. Like a terrible CGI bear! It took me a while to muster the courage up to go into the house. The door was partly opened. I pushed it in with a flashlight and was relieved that the inside of the house was actually very well lit. I put my flashlight away, got my camera and took a few more pics. There was no furniture, the floor was riddled with rubble, and some of the walls had huge holes in them. When I went in further to explore, I saw some things that I didn't pay much mind to at the moment, but now that I think back on them, they greatly disturbed me. The first thing that seemed a little odd was that one of the doors in the first room, that I presumed led to the basement, seemed a little too new to be in this house. It was also the only door in the whole house that was locked. Don't come in, I'm still using! Also, when I made my way up to the second floor, I saw some chairs and a fold-up table that also seemed a little too new to be there. But what disturbed me the most for some reason was the bathroom. The dust on the mirror had been wiped away, and in the bathtub, I saw a clear plastic tarp that had some water droplets on it from when I presume it was washed clean. That's when I heard something moan, really loud. And that's when I jumped the fuck out of the second story window. And ran back to the tracks. Halfway there, I realized the moaning was most likely a water pipe expanding or contracting, and that little moment of relief gave into horror, which I felt when I wondered why the water would be running on an abandoned house in the middle of the fucking woods. It's been a little more than two months since that happened, and I haven't gone back there, nor do I ever plan to. And that was Barbie.avi. And while Like Jeff the Killer got its origins from some unexplained bit of media, it wasn't turned into some cliché monster story full of hyperrealism and blood. It does have a lot of ambiguousness in it, but it's not the kind that just makes you roll your eyes and think they didn't put any effort into it. It's like a mystery movie, it makes you go, hmm, why was there tarp in the bath? And ask questions like that. I found it very well written, very engaging, and while a little pretentious, that's probably not a bad thing considering some of the other stuff I've read. And that's all we have time for tonight on Pillar Pasta. So, until next time, sweet dreams.